country on water and swamp. The most fascinating example of this battle won with the water is the city of Amsterdam. Amsterdam takes its name from the Dutch word dam, meaning dike, and the Amstel, the river that flows through it. Once a humble fishing village in the 17th century, Amsterdam became the most prosperous port in Northern Europe. The city, which was made famous by its canals, owes its prosperity to the water that serves as a route for trade. But above all, it is down to the ingenuity of its people. These canals are like knife cuts notched into the dike that forms its foundations. They allow the water to circulate. Amsterdam's canals stretch for a total of more than 100 kilometers, crossed by some 1,500 bridges that link around 90 islands. Amsterdam's canals form what is known as the Golden Curve, which gave rise to the city's nickname, the Venice of the North. The city was built on a dike, which is like a mound of earth. Then you build on top of it and create canals all around to enable traffic to flow and to prevent flooding. So what does that mean? That it means that there somewhere is a levee, maybe two or three meters, and that behind there, there's a canal, and we're still pumping groundwater into that canal, from the canal to the river, and from the river to the sea. The Dutch have always known how to transform their dangerous geographical situation between sea and river into an asset for trade, because they use the water to transport their goods. But to meet demand, they needed additional land for livestock. So in 1320, they built a circular dike that would allow them to extend their territory. Furthermore, creating meadows around Amsterdam would protect the city from the risk of flooding. This very first flood protection construction is a real achievement. Although no longer visible, this 126-kilometer-long dike was built at more than five meters above sea level and protected an area of around 800 square kilometers, including the city of Amsterdam, an area the size of the city of New York. It is thanks to this artificially created land that the Netherlands has been able to expand and to protect its historic capital. For centuries, the city of Amsterdam has therefore been the object of much attention. Thanks to the circular dike and some constant surveillance, the Dutch have so far been able to avoid the city being flooded. But sometimes it's been a close-run thing. On the night of the 13th of January, 1916, Flooding rivers and high tides led to dozens of dikes being breached. The entire region around Amsterdam was flooded. But miraculously, the capital was spared. The horror at the idea of seeing this historical treasure being devastated by floods pushed the Dutch authorities to take action that transformed their territory forever. they decided to close off the North Sea Inlet on the edge of which Amsterdam was built. So it was decided to close off this branch of the North Sea. The Southern Sea was closed off by a dike and it was then the largest uh, dike in the world. A huge construction project was undertaken to build this gigantic dike, 32 kilometers long and more than seven meters high, cutting right through the North Sea. The Aftslight Dyke, also known as the Enclosure Dam, was a technological feat for its time. This unique project confirmed the Dutch as world leaders in anti-flood technology. The dam took more than 20 years to complete. Tons of clay, concrete and scrap metal were required to create this enclosure dam 
which came down like a guillotine in the open sea. The first mission for this construction was to protect Amsterdam and its 210,000 inhabitants at the time from the risk of high tides. Amsterdam, like all of the rest of the country and certainly the low-lying parts, is protected by the dikes from flooding from the sea. There are smaller dikes also protecting it from the central lakes in the center of our part. So this is the basic safety that any city in the Netherlands has. So Amsterdam is part of that uh, uh, bigger infrastructure. Since 1932, thanks to the Afslite Dyke, Amsterdam has been the best protected city in the Netherlands. Reassured, the Dutch then tried their luck by expanding even more. And to do this, they used a technique that dates back to antiquity, polderization. Since the 16th century, the Netherlands has expanded its territory by some 8,000 square kilometers, an area around the size of Corsica. We've always been threatened by water, by sea, by rivers, and we have defined a kind of uh, mechanical, a kind of machine, what Holland is, an artificial country, where we can beat the water. We, we push the water out and we create a dry land. Around one-fifth of the country is built on land reclaimed from the sea in the marshes. This reclamation is known as polderization. The Romans used these techniques back in the first century. To polderize an area, it must first be dried out. To do this, it is surrounded by a dike. Then with the help of windmills and now electric pumps, the water contained within the area is pumped out through canals. The water leaves behind muddy areas in which reeds or other plants are added to absorb the salt and complete the drying and desalination process. This marine land is thus transformed into arable land. The decision to create these polders was connected actually by the projections of the dem demographics of the country, as well as the necessity to become independent in agricultural terms, to be self-sufficient agriculturally. So we needed new land and we were very successful in doing so. There are fields as far as the eye can see, covered with green grass. But behind this image of nature, each plot of land here is artificial. Under these carpets of grass, the earth lacks fertility. Human beings have an amazing capacity to disrupt, but also to degrade and destroy entire ecosystems. You have to accept that in spite of our eco-engineering feats, no matter what we do, we'll probably never be able to create anything 100% natural. 